Welcome back to Comic Storian, and today we're going to be continuing the storyline of Spider-Man Beyond as we discover the truth behind Dr. Octavius's research and what he has discovered the Beyond organization has been doing this whole time. This is the Comic Storian channel where I take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites, or I get you caught up on current comic books by cutting out a lot of the fluff and showing you what's going on in the world of comics. This allows you to know what's happening so you can buy the next issue, or you can go buy these issues to get more context or more of the art, or you can just stay up to date on your favorite books. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today we're going to be continuing the Spider-Man Beyond storyline like I said, and we just discovered that Peter is back in action and out there trying to be Spider-Man again, but that doesn't change the fact that Ben Riley, his clone from before, is now the official Spider-Man working for the Beyond organization. But the Beyond organization is also creating a lot of other secret things that they're not telling Ben Riley about, so our new Spider-Man is beginning to wonder what is going on. Aunt May and Otto Octavius went on their own secret mission to try and figure out the Beyond organization themselves as a way to help Peter Parker. But what they actually discovered is that the Beyond organization is using old forms of Otto Octavius' technology. And he's not exactly happy about that. Which brings us to today's issues, Amazing Spider-Man 84 and 85. Now let's get into the Spider-Man Beyond saga. While Peter Parker is still recovering in the hospital, Ben Riley has been tasked with overwatching New York as Spider-Man. Backed by the Beyond Corporation and heavily invested in, Ben has to follow the guidelines that Beyond has set out for him if he wants to continue operating as the web-slinging hero. And some of those guidelines involve therapy with Dr. Kefka. As Dr. Kefka says to focus and tell her what he sees, Ben tells her that he sees his uncle, but his face is gone. Dr. Kefka tells him to open up his eyes, asking what does he see now, when suddenly the empty face is filled with Uncle Ben's face, but looks disappointed. She then asks how does that make him feel, and Ben says overwhelmed. Overwhelmed that someone could believe in him so much that it makes him want to do what's right. As Ben begins to break down, Dr. Kefka tells him good. That is great progress. How are you feeling, Ben? He gets up smiling, telling her, Honestly, amazing. Absolutely top tier breakthrough here. Can't thank you enough, doctor. Feeling a bit more refreshed on his outlook on work and life, Ben decides to take Janine out for dinner to celebrate. After getting dressed for a night out, the two sit in the back seat of their self-driving beyond car, with Ben asking how is she adjusting to everything. The fancy pad, Marcus, a staff on call, self-driving cars. Still weird, isn't it? She tells him that it's something. Wouldn't say that it's perfect, but at least they're doing okay. Ben tells her, yeah, Beyond is far from perfect. The whole situation with Miles was rough, and don't even get me started with Maxine. But despite all of that, they let him go out and do some real good. Janine leans in, explaining that if they're landing on good things to add, she has something else. But at that moment, Ben's phone rings, and he asks how badly will he pay for answering this. She tells him it'll be a swift death. He picks up the phone, stating he cannot express how bad his timing is on this, and Marcus explains that he's going to have to put a pin on date night. They need him ASAP. A major player that spent the last week making life hell for beyond just reappeared. Ben asks what kind of player, and Marcus explains one that has eight arms. Otto Octavius is currently holed up in the Beyond Data Center in Midtown. A lot of intel in there, stuff that Marcus doesn't even know about. They need Ben over there protecting those assets now. As Ben hangs up, Janine tells him that it's okay, they'll get dinner another time. This is one of his get out of jail free cards. Use it wisely. Meanwhile, over at the data center, Otto is holding the workers hostage, yelling that this entire empire is built on lies and thievery. Your masters will return what you have taken from me. As Otto works one of the terminals, a worker tells him that he might want to rethink that. It won't end well, and Otto turns to him. Silence! Beyond thought that they could elude me by placing my most cherished secrets in a place free from outside communications. But there is no place that these arms cannot reach. I've seen how Beyond really operates, how they really think. As the defenses surrounding a small drive are brought down, Otto walks over, about to take it when a voice tells him, Oh no, look out. At that moment, Ben swings in, kicking Otto to the ground, telling the workers to hurry and get out of here. He'll take care of things. As Ben tries to web up Otto, the mechanical arms stop his webbing. We both know who the superior Spider-Man is, but I am here for a different reason. Something was taken from me, something that I wasn't even aware of until I stumbled upon one of your corporate masters, hidden side adventures. 
Otto begins to beat into Ben when suddenly his mechanical arms lose power. What is the meaning of this? And Ben tells him, nothing to be ashamed of happens to everyone. But in case you're wondering, it's a bit of anti octech that the folks in the weapon divisions shipped up. Tagged you with it a while ago. Otto begins to take off his harness, no matter. What I have come for is already in reach. He picks up the drive, reactivating the building's defenses, and Ben's spidey senses go crazy. All the automated turrets begin to spring out, firing non-lethal rounds at Ben, pinning him down until he finally collapses. Otto turns off the weapons, informing him, This is merely a prelude, boy. I pray for your master's sake that they hire someone better equipped for when I return. After blacking out, Ben begins to awaken in the medical wing where Marcus finishes patching him up, and Ben asks, How bad are things looking? Marcus says that he doesn't know the specifics of what was in the black box, besides it contained information that Beyond deems supremely sensitive, and it is now in Otto Octavius' hands. But before Ben could even really respond, a hologram of Maxine appears, stating that they hired him because they believed that he was the right man for the job, and she's disappointed to find that he was unable to best a foe that legacy Spider-Man made a routine of beating. It's hard to overstate how badly she needs that drive back in their hands, and as for now, that is his number one priority. Ben says that he understands, but he doesn't love the whole cloak and dagger that she is being about what is on that drive. Maxine tells him, I know exactly the information that you need to operate at 100% capacity as a beyond asset, now get back out there. But while Ben is recovering from his fight with Dr. Ock, across town at Beyond HQ, a man walks up to the front desk. I am here to see Maxine Danger. The security officer tells him that he doesn't see any scheduled visits for Miss Danger, but the man tells him, that's no problem. Otto then leads over the counter stating, this visit is something of a surprise. Ben races across town as Otto casually makes his way through the Beyond Security and into the R&D departments when he stumbles upon something unsettling. He looks at the sign asking, they dare. What on earth is the sandwich department and why is it room one? Are there more? The door opens and a BLT tells him, Release us, oh bunless one, and we will grant you wishes three. Otto slams the door shouting, Egat! Several floors later, Otto looks at a jar of pills stating that these are nothing but glorified hangover pills. Another waste. Then a voice calls out telling him that he hope he has a prescription for those. Otto looks back to see Misty Knight telling him that she's gonna warn him. The side effects might include kicking his butt. And Colleen whispers, hey, hey, you're better than that pun. After a rather quick tussle, Otto grabs a hold of Misty, throwing her into Colleen, locking them in the lab, telling them, sit tight. I'll return once my business is finished. Up in Maxine's office, the security rushes to barricade the entrance, telling Maxine that she needs to go to the safe room, but Maxine says that she refuses to waste a perfectly good safe room on a temper tantrum from Otto Octavius. As the door is shut, she can hear the screams and shouts of the security officers, as she just folds her arms, watching. Suddenly, the metal doors are ripped apart, and Otto leans in. I would like to have some words with you! The lies, the manipulation, everything your spider program was built on. Once I take over, I'll see that it's used for its intended purpose. At that moment, the window breaks open as Ben crashes through, telling Otto, You must have missed the sign, but the suggestions box was in the break room. Ben punches Otto back into a wall, and Maxine tells him to try and be careful not to destroy any more of her office. Otto begins to crawl back up, grabbing a hold of Ben, throwing him into another room, stating, You have become too much of a distraction as of late. Ben stands back up, telling him, Don't worry, it's all going according to plan. This room is quite special, you see. With a snap of Ben's fingers, the weapons room lights up, and Ben grabs a hold of a magnetic gun, firing it, shorting out Otto's mechanical arms. As the spinnerets then wrap themselves around the weakened arms, Ben delivers a solid punch to his face, with Otto falling back. Something about you has changed. No matter, though, this farce has gone on long enough. Otto presses a button and his harness falls off, but then springs to life, launching itself at Ben. Ben manages to grab a hold of it with his webbing, tossing it to the side before it has a chance to explode, but then uses the massive hole that it created to throw them both out of it. They both tumble down, with Otto yelling, You will kill both of us! But they land on the nearby rooftop, with Ben telling him, Bet that looked pretty cool. Otto begins to laugh. <laughs> you are so naive, you don't even know that you are in a box. But you are nothing more than veal, a calf fattened up by Maxine and her people to think that you could offer any worth beyond it being a highly suggestible whelp. Ben clenches his fist, punching Otto. Shut up! 
No more lies. No more games. I'll prove to you, to everyone, that I'm here for a reason and that I belong and that I get results. Ben continues to punch, but Otto continues laughing. <laughs> You're a fool! A damned fool! Beyond didn't choose you because of your strong will, but because you are psychologically compromised. Because you are weak, an easily controlled lapdog prone to emotional outbursts and distractions whose leash ends in Beyond's hands. Don't believe me? I have proof! The data drive containing all of Maxine and Beyond's secrets. I barely even had to scratch the surface. The security protocols have been disabled. No one will know that it has been opened. Its contents are only known to me and me alone. Otto holds out the drive and Ben takes it. You're lying. I've done so much good. I'm not going to let you take this away from me, Otto. But Otto stands up straightening his coat. I am many things, but a liar is not one of them. You can see the details of your psych profile compiled by Beyond Psychologist yourself. Ben begins to scan through the drive and Otto begins to walk off. Goodbye. May you enjoy your win, Sir man Later, Ben returns to Maxine, and she asks, after intercepting Otto, the ensuing battle led to not only Otto's escape, but the loss of the data drive? Ben tells her. That's correct. Otto's belt was armed and was set to self-destruct along with the drive. Maxine tells him that that is unfortunate, though it's better destroyed than in the hands of a lunatic. Adequate job. Ben turns to leave, and then he stops. Why did Beyond choose me? Maxine tells him because of his determination and strong will. He nods. Right. Thank you for the honesty. Time I get back home, Maxine. Later, Ben returns to his apartment with Janine. But as Janine asks if everything's okay, Ben hands her his mask, telling her that everything is great. He just needs her to wash his mask for him. It got a little dirty from all the punching. Don't lose it. Anyway, long day. Gonna go take the world's longest shower. Once in the bathroom, Ben looks at himself in the mirror, punching it, creating a hole similar to the one that he saw Uncle Ben with. And there you have it, Spider-Man 8485, setting up a big reveal. Beyond is not taking Ben Riley in because he's amazing, but because of something else, and it's on that drive. Now, the next story arc in here is once again kind of broken up weirdly, as it's going to explain a little bit more about what's on that drive that Dr. Octavius found, and what's going on with Peter, and we get the introduction of a new villain. So I'm excited about bringing that to you guys myself, and make sure you subscribe to the channel, as I'm going to be aiming to bring it to you next week, right here at the Comic Story and Channel. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and I will see you next time right here with the continuation of Amazing Spider-Man leading into 87.